Hey, Pretty Girl Club. I am bringing back my story time series. If you missed my other story time videos about like how I ripped off my wig at work and you know how I've like um, worn different hairstyles at my job and stuff, make sure you catch those. I also have plenty of story times over in the Patreon, so make sure you join that and become a part of the Discord. But today I'm going to talk about how I got uninvited from Bible study because supposedly I was soaking up all the attention. So let me start off by giving some context here. This is when I was in college, I went to an HBCU. And so a lot of the girls who were at that HBCU, they were very monocultural or like they really liked dating black men and stuff. And for me, like when I went to an HBCU, I never viewed it as like, oh, you know, I'm super pro-black. I only date black guys. I only like everything I do is just black. I considered myself pro-black at the time, but I wasn't as uh, serious about it, I guess. I always had a multicultural background and more of a multicultural mindset by the time I was about 18 or 19. So when I was in college, I used to get made fun of because I didn't smoke, I didn't drink, I didn't sleep with guys or like have casual sex. I actually still don't to this day, not because I look down on people who do that, but because it just never was interesting to me. I was always into like doing my own hobbies. Like um, I used to love filming stuff at school and you know, kind of the same thing as what I'm doing today. I used to love like making little uh, videos or making little uh, Instagram posts, doing photography and stuff. I was always more of that kind of girl on campus, more of like, I guess, the creative, artsy, fun type. Um, so I just had different methods of having fun. And so a part of how I thought I would make friends is by hanging out with other girls who had a similar background to me. So for those of you who have been a part of this channel, you guys know that I come from a very strong Christian background and my dad's a minister. Like I literally come from ministers and pastors for as far back as I can remember. And so I was like, okay, um, I'm going to make friends with the girls on campus who are a part of like the church groups, like the Christian clubs. So at my college, they had uh, they had a different Christian group. They had like a women's one. They had a co-ed one. They also had like the Christian choirs and stuff and like Christian singing groups. And so there was like a really good social opportunity to like make friends who kind of had that background. So even though I wasn't like an avid churchgoer, I just figured, you know, these women, hopefully they will get along with me a little bit better because they also don't smoke or drink or like sleep with guys and stuff. So maybe I won't have to worry about them being pick me's or trying to like randomly fight me and stuff. So I made friends with a few of the girls and I ended up being in this friend group with three different girls. So one of the girls was an unambiguous monoracial dark-skinned black woman. The other one was an MLS girl who was like black identified, but she was clearly, she was literally only like one shade darker than me. And she just had type four hair. Those were really the only differences. Um, she was definitely MLS. The other one was a black identified girl who happened to be overweight and big. So I'm not trying to make fun of her weight. I'm just bringing that up for context. So I started hanging out with these, these three girls and everything was great at first because, you know, we didn't really focus on let's go try to get some guys or whatever. So everything was good, except there was this one scenario where I was hanging out with the big girl and we were just walking. We were walking down the street and you know how like if you're walking in the hood, there will be like black guys who stand on the side and they like try to yell at you from the street or sometimes they'll have like dirt bikes or motorcycles or a car and they're like making vroom vroom noises and trying to get your attention and stuff. So we were walking and people in the local area would tell us like, hey, don't go up to the guys who are like on the bikes and motorcycles and stuff because those guys are a part of one of the local gangs. Like those guys are actual criminals and stuff. So don't, um, don't hang out with those guys. They're probably going to try to scam you and like steal stuff from you. And so we were walking past these sketchy guys. And I obviously, I don't respond to guys who were like, you know, trying to yell at you on the street. And so I was just walking. And then my friend, she was like, hey, like when they were trying to yell at us and I was like, oh, no. And then they started trying to talk to us and stuff. And I was completely silent because I was scared. And this friend literally ditches me right there on the street and rides on their motorcycle with this guy because they were like, oh, hey, you guys want to ride? You know how guys try to do that. So she literally ditches me on the side of the street so that she can ride a motorcycle with this random Dusty. And so I literally was like, okay, I guess I will just keep on walking home because I just got ditched and I'm by myself and there are just a bunch of guys here and I feel unsafe. So I kept walking. And by the way, this was during the daytime, but 
there were like um, not a lot of other girls around or like people. It was basically like the convenience store types of guys. So that's what it was. So I was like, okay, let me just hurry up and get home, I guess, since she's not going to be able to talk because she's riding in circles with this guy. And so my silly self, I still forgave this girl and was like, it's okay that you ditched me or whatever. And so afterwards, by the way, I asked her, I was like, hey, why do you get on the motorcycle with those guys? Like, you know that those guys are a part of the gang. And by the way, I'm not just profiling them and saying, oh, they were a part of the gang. No, it was well known. Like people knew these guys' names. Like, okay, so-and-so, you know, he's a part of XYZ gang. And then this other guy is a part of the other gang. So it wasn't like we're just profiling or we're just being mean or whatever. No, it was already well known that these guys were parts of gangs. Like they would literally do stuff to people on campus, like, you know, different robberies and stuff. Um, one of my friends actually got his phone stolen by one of those guys. But anyway, that was already red flag number one. So, but I forgave her because I was like, you know, uh, people make mistakes and sometimes people just do things and, you know, they're just kind of experimenting or exploring. So no big deal. Like we can still be cool. That was mistake number one was remaining friends with her. But they used to have this Bible study in one of the dorm buildings and it was co-ed. It was like the co-ed Bible study. But I never thought anything of it because my goal with going to a Bible study was not to try to get chosen by some random guy. And plus, I already knew all of the guys that were in kind of the Christian groups and stuff. They Trust me, they were nowhere near what I was looking for physically, mentally. It, no, absolutely not. So one of my friends, um, she was having a Bible study and like she was leading it that night. And so she was like, yeah, I'm going to be making food. We're going to be making like nachos and stuff and it's going to be really cool. And I was like, oh, okay, that's great. Like just let me know and then I'll show up. So I noticed that no one let me know when the Bible study was. And I was just like, oh, you know, maybe they didn't have it. I didn't think anything of it because I figured they would let me know. And so it turns out I heard through the grapevine that they did have that Bible study that night. It was like a co-ed Bible study and they had fun and everything was good. And then I talked to my friend again and I was like, oh, hey, like, um, can you let me know when the next Bible study is? Because I want to like hang out and eat nachos and stuff and like have fun. And she was like, yeah, OK. So I ended up coming to the next Bible study and afterwards... I ended up talking to this friend, the same friend that had ditched me to ride on the motorcycle with the Dusties. And I was like, um, yeah, I didn't get to go to the last Bible study. Maybe you guys, I guess you guys forgot to text me or something, but I would have wanted to come to that. And she was like, oh no, like we um, didn't want you to come to that Bible study because we just felt like you soak up all the attention. And I was like, how do I soak up the attention? Like, what do I do basically? Like, what what have I said or done to show that I'm trying to soak up attention? And then she tried to start mimicking me and she starts like laughing a lot and like twirling her hair. She's like, <laughs> I'm Exoticals United. <laughs> so she was kind of trying to imply that my uh, kind of more bubbly personality or the fact that I'm more like jovial and happy and kind of like smiley and friendly, the fact that I'm like that, she took that as, I am trying to soak up attention. And so I still forgave her that time stupidly. And then there was another Bible study happening. So basically the way they did it was there was a different Bible study every single week and a different person would host it. Like you would go to their apartment or their dorm or whatever. And then, you know, so I went to the next Bible study and by the way, these same friends, like the same few friends, they purposely didn't invite me to this Bible study, but I found out from someone else when the Bible study would be. So I crashed the Bible study. Well, I mean, I guess I didn't crash it because another person had told me that, you know, that the Bible study was going to be at the apartment or whatever. So anyway, I crashed the Bible study and these friends did not know that I was going to show up. So when I came to this Bible study, there were these typical dusty, like incel types of guys, no offense. Um, but you know, those guys who say they're Christians, but in reality, they're like porn addicts and stuff. By the way, I do have a story time coming up about uh, one of those types of guys that I encountered. But so there was some guys there, some weirdo guys, and they were like, oh, how's it going, Exoticals United? <laughs> oh my gosh, it's nice to see you. And I was just like, okay, like, hey guys, what's going on? Like, are we going to watch the sermon or like, you know, do the Bible study? And so we ended up doing the Bible study. And I remember the guys, they were like, oh, you know, we like being around women of God or whatever. And then they were kind of complimenting all of us and saying like, oh, you know, Sarah, you're very nice. And like, Tiffany, you're very good at studying the Bible. You know, they kind of went around the room and were like comp complimenting the girls. And then like when it got to my turn to say the compliment or whatever, they were like, oh, you're so beautiful or whatever. And then I could tell 
that some of the girls were kind of like, ew, like, why is he saying that? And then this other guy, he was like, oh, Exoticals United, you have such beautiful eyebrows. Like, your eyebrows are perfect. And I was just like, this is really weird. Like, these guys come off as extremely weird. Like, why are they doing this? And I was just like, oh, okay, thanks. Like, whatever. I wasn't taking it as a big deal. But then I later learned that one of my friends, the one who um, was riding the motorcycles with the guys, her and then my other friend in the group, the one who was also an MLS girl but was more black identified, apparently she had a crush on the guy who made the eyebrow comment because the eyebrow guy, um, he was like one of the leaders. He was one of the Bible study leaders. I guess he was like uh, highly revered in the Christian circles on campus and people viewed him as like being this man of God. And I'm not trying to be mean, but this guy literally looked like a turtle. Okay, so you know how Urkel looks? Like he didn't even look like Urkel. He looked like a way worse version of Urkel. Okay, so he had like a small bowling ball shaped head and then like his eyes were super tiny. And I mean, that's fine. If you have a bowling ball head and tiny eyes, that's okay. You can be mis- Mr. Potato Head. That's fine. I don't care. But anyway, so he, basically he just did not have the type of look or anything um, that I was personally interested in. Like I just, I didn't view him that way. And this guy would literally wear high water khaki pants with loafers and a picnic shirt. You know those shirts where it's like yellow and brown and then it's like plaid. So he would wear those and he had glass. It literally looked like he was a black version of Waldo. Like, you know, where's Waldo? Like, that's literally how this guy looked. And I'm not trying to throw shade because, you know, if that's how you look and you embrace that, that's fine. Like, do what you want to do. But I was just not um, interested in him that way whatsoever. But it turns out that my friend, she liked this guy and she was like trying to get his attention or trying to get him to like want to date her and be her boyfriend and stuff. And I guess this guy, the Urkel guy, the bowling ball guy, I guess he uh, would talk about me and stuff like when I wasn't around. So apparently the nights that I was not there at the Bible study, he was specifically asking like, hey, where's your friend Exoticals United? Like, is she going to come to the Bible study? Oh, you guys need to make sure to invite her to the next Bible study. And I guess he was literally going around telling everyone that I was his exact type or whatever. He was like, oh, Exoticals United is just my type. She's tall and light skinned with long hair. Do you guys remember how in the early 2000s being light skinned with long hair was like the trend? But yeah, apparently the bowling ball guy was going around saying that and that triggered my friend and she didn't want me to be around him because for whatever reason, for whatever reason, she thought that this guy would kind of not pay attention to her and would pay attention to me. I am telling you guys that religion can brainwash you into being such an extreme pick me. I mean, in religion, all the guy really has to have is morals. You know, he just has to like believe in God or whatever. And literally this guy could have nothing else going for him. Like you could be doing 50-50. He could be, you know, have no edges. A lot of guys like to talk about girls with no edges. Meanwhile, this guy will be over here with no edges, bad hairline, breath smells bad. But I just thought that it was really interesting how these girls, especially girls who consider themselves to be um, highly moral, you know, Christian girls, how they would sacrifice a potential lifelong friendship. You know, they were they were willing to potentially sacrifice their female friendships just so they could have a shot with uh, either a guy on a motorcycle or the bowling ball guy who runs the campus Bible study. If that's not male-centered, I don't know what is, but have any of you ladies experienced this? Have you ever experienced a guy, or I mean a girl, um, kind of throwing you under the bus so that a guy could give her attention, or maybe she's mad that you're getting attention from a guy, so she basically wants to sabotage you? Has this ever happened to any of you guys? Let me know what you think in the comment section, and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty, ladies.